Hello and welcome to this sysadmin tutorials video on using the NetApp 7 mode transition tool to migrate a Microsoft SQL cluster from 7 mode to C mode. Up on the screen is the network diagram of how this lab is set up. You can see that we have two Microsoft SQL servers, VM SQL SRV01 and 02. Each one has two NICs, one connected to the LAN network and the second one connecting to the iSCSI storage network. Down the bottom here you can see that we have a 7 mode system and on the right here we have a C mode system. So both are running the NetApp simulator and currently our databases, logs, install and quorum disks are sitting on the 7 mode system. Let's jump into the lab and just have a quick look around. Here we're on the SQL node number 1 and you can see here that it is the owner of all the storage disks. And if we click on roles, we can also see that it is currently running and owning the SQL Server Instance 2 role. In disk management, we can see our list of disks here, which are all iSCSI, disk 1 to 4. And if we look on the iSCSI initiator settings, you can see that we're connected to the NetApp 7 mode system. And clicking on the discovery tab, this shows the IP address also of the 7 mode system that we're connected to. Now if we head on over to System Manager and here we can see that we have four volumes. We have our database volume, install, logs and quorum volume. Each one of these volumes contains one LUN. If we head on over to the LUNs we can also see the names of the LUNs here and the corresponding volume. And if I highlight one of the LUNs and then click on Initiator Groups we can see that the Initiator Group for this LUN is VM SQL SRV Cluster. And if we have a look at this initiator group, we can see that it contains the two host iSCSI initiators. And now we're going to make our way over to the 7 mode transition tool. Here we'll enter our username and password. And on the home screen here, we're going to click on copy base transition. And we'll click start planning. On the second window, you can see that we have our 7 mode controller set up alongside our cluster mode controller set up here on the right side. If this is the first time you're running the 7 mode transition tool, you won't see any controllers listed on the left or the right here. So what you'll need to do is on the left hand side at the top, enter in the IP address, fully qualified domain name, along with the username and password of the node or the cluster, and click add. Once you do that, it'll populate the controllers as you can see in this demonstration here. And once you've got both controllers set up, we can click next. On the right hand side here you can see the volumes that have been populated. These are the volumes that are residing on the 7 mode system. So we're going to go ahead and select our log, install, database and quorum disks. And we'll click create project and continue. For the pre-cutover read write mode warning, uh, we can simply click OK on this as our destination system is running data on tap 8.3.2 so we'll go ahead and click OK. We'll give our project a name and you have the option to group similar projects together by creating a new project group or you can simply place them in the default group. I'm going to be placing mine in the default group and we'll just click Save. Now this IP address here is the management IP of the 7 mode system. Just ensure that this IP address is correct and once you've done that you can click Next. Now we get to the bit of the project where we select our destination. So we can see here our VMLab NetApp 2 is our C mode system and the SVM that we're going to be selecting is SVM1. Once we've done that we'll click next. In this screen we're going to be selecting our target aggregates. On the right hand side we can see the available space of each aggregate in the cluster. We also have the option to change the target volume names by changing these fields here. I'm going to keep mine the same. And I'm also going to be selecting use the cluster data on tap volume names. That's going to change the target volume path here. And it will just make it forward slash and then the volume name. We'll click next and continue. In this screen we have the option to either select and use existing 7 mode lifts. Or we can add new lifts. I've already created the iSCSI lift on our destination cluster. Which is this lift here. So I don't need to do anything in this screen and I will click next. Here we're going to be creating a snap mirror schedule. I'm going to give my schedule a name. 
and my schedule is going to be running daily and the snap mirror is going to be updating every 30 minutes. I'll click create and we'll click OK here. We'll click on next. Now here I'm going to deselect all and the only option I'm going to be selecting is the eye groups and LUN mappings. That's going to copy across the initiator eye groups from the 7 mode to the C mode and place them on the LUN mapping. Now we'll click save and go to dashboard. We'll now run our pre-checks. This is going to ensure that all the snap mirror configuration is correct in between the 7 mode and C mode systems. You can see up the top here that our pre-check is successful. We'll click on close and we can now start our baseline copy. So I'm going to click start baseline. I'm going to select yes for the pre-check warnings. Our baseline operation is successful. We'll click close. And we can see here under data pending that the snap mirror is well underway. I'm going to pause the video for now and wait until this baseline finishes. And then we'll be back and continue along with this project. So as you can see, the baseline data copy has complete and it is green. Now, before we proceed with the pre cutover and then onto this full storage cutover, I just want to show you the clusters here. So here we're on node one. Node one is the owner of the databases, install logs and quorum disk. Just move this window. Yep, so you can see that in the background here. And in the foreground, you can see the drive letters, D, E, F, and G. On the right-hand side here is our iSCSI initiator properties. So we have one connection through to the seven mode system. And if I click on the discovery tab, you can see here I've got one IP address, which is also the seven mode system. Now, if we switch over to node number two, we can see that within disk management, this server does not actually own any of the disks and it's just placed in a reserve state. On the right-hand side is the iSCSI initiator properties, exactly the same as node number one, just one connection through to the seven mode system. And I'm just going to jump back onto node one. Now I'm just going to jump into SQL Studio and I'm just going to log in with my Windows authentication. Now if I expand databases on the left side here, you see I've got a test2 database. If I have a look in the properties of that, we see that the database is residing on D drive and the log files are residing on the E drive. So this database looks healthy here. If I head on over to the drives and we have a look in D drive and we browse down through the folder structure, we can see we have our tempdb and also our test2 database. And this is going to be the same for the log drive, which is the E drive. Browse through the folder structure again. And we can see we've got our temp log and our test2 log file. So now we're going to continue with the migration project. I'll close the SQL Studio. I'm going to head on over to my cluster. I'm going to right click on the cluster name. I'm going to go down to more actions and select shut down cluster. And yes. Okay, my cluster is now shut down on both nodes. You can verify that by the little red arrow there. Now what I'm going to do is head on over to the iSCSI initiator. I'm going to disconnect the old iSCSI initiator. Then I'm going to head on over to discovery and I'm going to remove the IP address. Okay, so we've got nothing in discovery and nothing in targets. So I'll leave that window open there for now. And I'll just show you quickly in disk management so we can only see our local drive. I'll need to repeat this process on node number two because as you can see node number two still sees the shared disks. Now I'll head to targets and complete the same task. We'll disconnect. As we disconnect you'll see on the left hand side that the drives will disappear slowly. Then we'll head on over to the discovery tab and remove the IP address to the server mode system. Now we're going to head on over to the 7MTT tool and we're going to click apply configuration. You have the option to test the migration before completing the full transition. To do that in the background it takes a volume clone and then mounts that volume clone for you. Once you finish testing you can click continue and the volume clone is destroyed. We're not going to be doing the testing in this lab so we'll just click continue. The pre cutover is now complete and successful. We'll go ahead and click close. We'll now click on complete transition. Here it states that it is recommended that you address all warnings in the transition start results before performing the cutover operation. 
So in the pre-cut over, once it's finished, if there's any warnings there, make sure you go through, read them, fully understand them. If you're unsure, uh, log a support request with NetApp, ask them to check it for you and see if it's okay to proceed. We're gonna click yes here. Now you have the option to take the source volumes offline or leave them online. I'm gonna be taking the source volumes offline in this project. So I will leave that ticked and click continue. And our cutover is now complete and successful. We'll click on close. If we take a look at the seven mode system, we can see that our four volumes have been taken offline as per the project. If we head on over to the C mode system, looking over at the volumes that have come across from seven mode, we can see the four volumes here in our clustered data on tap system all online. Now the only thing I found is that we'll need to go into the namespace because it does add those volumes into the namespace here and we'll just unmount the iSCSI LUN volumes. We'll just have a quick look at our LUNs. Our four LUNs are listed right here and now we're going to head back over to our SQL cluster. We're going to start with node 1 and we're going to enter in the IP address of the iSCSI lift on the cluster data on tap system, which is 192.168.6.52. And we'll click OK here. Now I'm going to go on the targets tab. You can see here that it's inactive. Now I'm just going to bring up the disk management. And as I connect over to our cluster data on tap, you'll see that the drives start to populate here under disk management. So we'll click connect. We'll turn on enable multipath. Set the local adapter to iSCSI initiator. The initiator IP is our local IP address of the Windows host. And the target being 6.52. We'll click OK. The connection is now successful and we can see on the left hand side that all of our drives have populated. Now they're all set as reserved because they are cluster disks. Now at this point in time I'm going to repeat the process on node number 2. We'll click the discovery portal. Type in the IP address and click OK. We'll click the Targets tab, select our target and click Connect. Enable Multipath, we'll click on Advanced, local adapter being iSCSI Initiator. Our Initiator IP is the local IP address of the Windows host and our target is 6.52. We'll click OK. See all the disks populated here, all being reserved as well. Now I'm going to head back to node number one and I'm going to head into our failover cluster manager. I'm going to right click on my cluster and I'll click start cluster. You'll see here in computer management that all the drive letters will start to be populated on top of these drives. So as we're on host number one, Host number one has taken ownership of the databases, logs, and install drive. And looks like host number two has taken ownership of the quorum drive, which is this five gig drive down here. And that's why it's come up as reserved. Just to verify that, we can go into our failover cluster manager. We can expand storage, click on disks. And we can see exactly that. Databases, install, and logs, the owner is node number one. And for the quorum drive, the owner is node number two. I just want to show you one last thing within the failover cluster manager and that's if we click on the warnings here we can see that in the event details so the cluster disk resource called databases found the disk identifier to be stale it then goes on to say this may be expected if a restore operation was just performed or if this cluster uses replicated storage the disk signature or disk unique IDs property for the disk resource has been corrected so it's got one of these warnings for each disk as long as it's been corrected here by the system we are good to go. If I just have a look on the roles we have our SQL server instance running on node number one. I'm going to fire up our SQL management studio. When I look into the SQL management studio you can see our database test number two is all here with all its information. If I right click on it go to files you can see the location is still the same D drive and E drive for the database and for the logs. If I head into Explorer and we go to databases to our D drive and we go down to the folder structure, 
we see actually our tempdb file and our test2 file here which are the mdf files if i go over to the e drive we'll also see the same but for our log files so that completes this video on the netapp 7 mode transition tool and migrating a Microsoft SQL server cluster from a NetApp 7 mode system across to a NetApp C mode system. I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.